Hi, right, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics video number 49. Sorry for the long delay, um, had a lot to do. Uh, this is the introduction to the new math construct, and this is for general audience. Hello, my name is Robert Stinty. I'm an electrical engineer with over 30 years experience. In this video, we're going to introduce a new math construct. Until, the new, until now, the new math construct was talked about in nebulous terms. Uh, the reason for the secrecy is described in the video, Monkeys with Typewriters, which will explain why uh, this is a critical piece to ethereal mechanics and it's being protected in certain ways. Uh, but we'll describe that in Monkeys with Typewriters. Uh, the new math construct will be released in exhaustive detail in the Distinti University set of videos, which will be YouTube videos on my current channel, just a different, you know, uh, playlist, I guess you would call it, different series numbers. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because the new math construct is a standalone development. It's, um, it's a building block necessary for ethereal mechanics, but it can be used on many, many other things. And it's going to, well, let's explain what, let's go on. And so let's introduce the characters for today's teleplay. Uh, we're going to be using Albert Einstein. Uh, we're not making fun of him, we're just rep using him to represent all the people in science, mathematics, and engineering, to include me. Yes, I should have asked the, these questions. The questions we're going to ask are the questions I should have asked 20 or 30 years ago. I should have figured out that there was something wrong, but I didn't. Okay, and we're going to use Col Inspector Columbo to represent the tireless seeker of the truth, uh, a person who agonizes over the smallest details that don't make sense, uh, details that keep uh, him awake at night, and these are details that other people just wantonly ignore. Uh, the scene is a classroom where the professor Einstein is, uh, Albert is teaching and uh, uh, Columbo's coming in. And so Columbo says, hi doc, I don't mean to bother you. Uh, I'm investigating a crime and I have a few questions about vectors to ask you. Yeah, you can tell the new math construct involves vectors. And Einstein says, well, I'm always happy to help. Uh, what's your question? And the interesting thing about Columbo is he looks disheveled and, and, and he sounds stupid, but that's how he disarms the very brilliant uh, people that he always ends up taking down in the Columbo series. Uh, the question he has is, can vectors be multiplied? I mean, if vectors can be added, then it follows that vectors should also be multiplied. And Einstein says, but Inspector Colombo, there is vector multiplication. It's called vector products, and there are quite a few of them. There's the dot product, the cross product, the Cartesian product, the inner product, yada, 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 yada. And he goes, oh, I see. Uh, but what do these products produce? And Einstein says, well, they produce either scalars or vectors. And then Colombo says, well, OK, thank you, Doc. You've been very helpful. And Colombo walks out the door. And as he's going down the hallway, he gets an epiphany, and his hand goes up in the air, and he turns around because he's got another question to ask. He comes back and says, just one more thing, Doc. If vector products yield area, like the cross product yields area, if you have one vector here and another vector here, let's say this is in the x direction and this is in the y direction, and you do x cross y, which goes like this, using the right-hand rule from x to y, that means that the area normal is in the z direction, z dimension. Okay, but x cross y comes out as area, which is square distance, distance squared. Okay, or in other cases, vectors produces scalars, which are unitless, which is confusing, because if you're multiplying units x times y, how can you come up with something that's scalar, that's unitless? And then Einstein realizing, wow, this is a serious issue. I mean, we, we've got dimensional problem here because if your cross product produces a z vector, which is in the units of square area, how can you map that to the z dimension, which is linear distance? That's a, that's a, that's a train wreck of dimensional analysis. And Einstein realizing that this is a serious issue, and in angry tones, well, we've been doing it for years and it works. Now, please leave me alone. I have important things to do. That's usually uh, when uh, Colombo gets under the, the perp's 
uh, skin. That's when the perps just go brush them off. And Columbo goes, oh, okay, Doc, thank you anyway. Nice talking to you. I guess, yeah, if we have been using it for years, he does a very disarming thing as he leaves. But then he, he thinks and he thinks and he never lets these things go. Then he comes back a few days later. Doc, I've been thinking about what you said. There, there's just these little details that keep me up at night that just don't make sense. And Einstein apprehensively says, all right, go on. But I only have a few minutes. And then using reciprocal th thinking. You see, Doc, it seems there's a lack of reciprocal function. I mean, if you can add, then you should be able to subtract. That's a reciprocal function. Likewise, if we have multiplication, that implies the existence of the reciprocal function of vector division. Yet vector division does not seem to exist. Worse, the vector products that are currently available do not contain enough information to allow for vector division. This and, and other arguments show that there's a severe, a severe lack of rigor in this field of mathematics, in this component of the fields of mathematics. And thus I'm placing you under arrest. Now this next part of the stuff is just to turn it into a crime so that uh, it fits to use Inspector Columbo. And then and Einstein goes, well, on what charges? It's not an imprisonable crime to lack rigor. And then Columbo says, a crime is academic theft. And Einstein goes, what? Columbo says, I checked into what you said, Doc. You're absolutely correct. The present vector product techniques are very useful in spite of the fact that they're dimensionally erroneous and they lack an inverse function of division. But this shows a lack of rigor because these deficiencies should have been solved decades ago. And Einstein says, well, how is this academic theft? Because, because academia gives the credit to Josiah, I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Willard Gibbs for the development of vector analysis. Yet it's well known that Oliver Heaviside independently co-developed, I think this was a misspelling on Wikipedia, because co-developed means you developed with somebody. So how can you independently co-develop? That's just the term that's on Wikipedia. Uh, vector analysis. And academia scorns Heaviside for a lack of rigor and then gives credit to one of their own for vector methodology which exhibits a lack of rigor? So either there's hypocrisy or there is theft. And since it's not likely that two independent people developed identical methodologies which both exhibit a lack of rigor, it's, that's very improbable. And so the theft is an academic uh, theft has a occurred. Now I'm giving my apology. I, I came up with this little closing here. Uh, I don't know if there, if I don't know. Uh, this guy, whether there was theft, I just came up with an ending that's plausible only to come up with the ability to use Inspector Columbo as one of the uh, actors in this thing. So you can take this with a grain of, of salt. So let me recap in a different way what's going on here. Humanity, for the past hundred and some odd years, has vector addition and vector subtraction. We've had a form of vector multiplication, and that would be the cross product and the dot product, and there's some other inner products out there. I've looked at them all. None of them are sufficient to provide for the inverse function of division, except possibly for, for cart, um, Cartesian multiplication. I forget what the name of it was. But in any event, There is no inverse function of division capable with those forms of vector multiplication. Therefore, they're incomplete. And furthermore, they violate dimensional analysis because they either produce vectors or scalars. Multiplication should produce terms that, are, that do not fit into the original dimensions of the products being multiplied. And they should, or it should not be vectors that are produced when you multiply two vectors. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of problems with what we consider the current vector multiplication. It's been useful though, it's useful. Okay, so what I'm proposing and I have developed is vector multiplication which is complete. It is not a dimensional train wreck like the classic ones and it also provides for the inverse function of vector division. And now we can play with against mother nature with a full deck of cards and maybe we can get somewhere. And that's essentially what the new math construct is. It's completing the vector uh, functions to include a complete form of multiplication and division. 
Once you have all four of these, you can get into transcendental functions, uh, the square roots of vectors. You can get into e to the vector. You can raise vectors to logarithms. You can do things you could not do with the prior vector product methods. And this is going to open the floodgates. Now, I know it's going to happen. Academia is going to say, oh, well, that's just a couple of functions. And they're going to downplay it. But watch. This is going to be changing all fields of science and engineering for years to come. And to be honest with you, I don't know if I have the complete final one. There, in my analysis, there are probably a million ways to do this. I found out the one that fits my needs. And maybe there's a better version out there for somebody to find. But hey, at least we open the floodgates and get this party rolling. So what's the path forward? Well, vector multiplication division, which I've been calling the new math construct, will be released in a distinctive university course, which is another set of series of YouTube videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's going to be called Introduction to Engineering Vectors and Matrices. It's, be, it's estimating about 10 videos. And the reason why I call engineering vectors and matrices is I've had to more rigorously define vectors and matrices. Mathematicians use matrices all different weird ways that I have a heartburn with. But uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't need them in my field of engineering. I deal with real quantities, real things, things that you can build real things from. And so I only need a small subset, but I'm going to rigorously define those. Therefore, our vector multiplication and division do not violate dimensional analysis rules. Uh, now, ethereal mechanics will be on hold until these videos are released. I'm estimating it'll probably be about three or four months to get all these videos done, but that's, you know, that's an off-the-cuff estimate. I don't know for sure. And what was my clue? Like I said, I missed all the, the I, I didn't ask the questions myself. What prompted me to figure out there was something wrong? Well, if you remember video 41, and video 41 represents something I did years ago. Okay, I reconciled terms 2, 3, and 5 years ago. And when I started the video series, I had not been able to re reconcile terms 1 and 4. Are, are they part of the same underlying force, or are they something two different things? Okay, and video 41 reconciled 2, 3, and 5. Again, that left 1 and 4 separate. And it wasn't until I published video 21. Video 21, that's when I realized that there was something wrong, and that's when I first mentioned the new math construct. But at that time, I had not developed it. I only knew that there had to be multiplication and division. And once we do that, we can reconcile these. I'm not going to show you how to do that now. We'll be doing that after we release the new math construct videos. Okay, so the final thought, let's get this party started. Okay, Ethereal Mechanics video 50 will continue the reconciliation of the terms, but again, 50 will be produced after the new Math Construct video series is finished, which hopefully should be not later than December of 2014. Uh, I thank you for all the kind words people have been saying. I do read all the comments, and when people sign up, I go look at their website to see what their interests are. I so hope I can make these videos more to what people's interests are. And uh, please give me a thumbs up whenever you can. And if you want to donate, go to my website. There's a donate button there. And sorry, my website's woefully out of date. I don't plan on updating it soon. Anyway, thank you. And.